Hi guys, how are we doing? So we're back in the shed today. So we've got to make the mount now for the Simagic M10 that we've received. Um, so a little bit more fabrication coming up. So to do that, I've got some six mil plate. It's, it's pretty much over engineered, but it's just what I've got laying around. And it's, it's, it's well up to the job. So what I've done, I've started, uh, this was flat steel plate. I've actually cut a groove down there with a one mil cutting disc. So I've actually cut down into the plate, about three quarters of the way through, and then we just pop it in a vise and knock it over. That way we get a really nice defined right angle bend. Just wouldn't be able to do that with the tools I've got in this uh, shop without doing it in this way. What we'll do afterwards, once we're, uh, we're happy that's a nice tight bend, I'm actually gonna tack it in, keep checking the angle, make sure it hasn't um, contracted and pulled up in any way. Once I'm sure it's all nicely set, then I'll run a nice bead of weld down there and we'll grind it and, and file it up and make a nice rounded bevel for that bend. It'll look pretty sweet. So you can see I've drilled a couple of holes in the top there. Now the reason I've done that is uh, so I can take it home, well I took it home last night just to check. Um, I've got all my measurements and my holes in the right place for it to mount directly onto those, onto that rig using the rib nuts and we'll reinstall. These holes are in the right place, so what I'll do now as well, we'll cut down uh, with a one mil cutting disc, we'll just take that channel out there, link the two holes together, I'll file it all down, then we've got a nice runner that we can uh, slide the bolts back and forth to get that adjustment. So that's pretty cool, that's all done. Future for that as well is, we're going to drill two holes in, pop some studs in, actually weld the studs into that plate, and then that's that part of the, uh, of the mount done. The next part of the mount is actually the base for the direct drive to mount to. And I'm gonna use this, which is a, a sheet of four mil um, mild steel. A friend at an engineering shop gave it to me. It was in his uh, off cuts pile. I know it's a little, little heavy, um, but it will do the job and there definitely won't be any movement. So what we're gonna do, same again, we're gonna measure, make a cut and fold, fold this up. So basically we're gonna fold it up into a U shape and it will sit between these two mounts. Um, then we're going to weld the fold lines. Then we've got a nice solid base for the, uh, for the direct drive unit to bolt down to. But there, yeah, that's where we are. Anyway, less talking, let's crack on and, uh, and get it done. So I've made the cut and then what I do, I just drop it in the vise and I actually use the, uh, the vise jewels to file it up. So I set, set it in the vise at the height I want and then I just use the jewels as a guide. So I try and get a nice or a straight to a line than I would without it. It's an easier way for me. Probably not a correct way but it's the way I do it. Okay, quick update. So I've just run the weld down there. Not too bad. That was fun. I haven't um, welded anything with some meat on it for a long while. So it was nice to just hold the trigger down and blast some weld in there. So I've got them both done. Um, the other one set there. Still a bit hot. So now we'll grind that up. That'll look mint. And then. Um, start on the next bit. Okay, quick update. So, got them browned off. They look pretty uh, average. <laughs> nah, it didn't come out too bad. So what I've done, um, I measured out, so I know I've got 330 mil gap 
between the rails on the sim rig to work with. So I measure that out, tack these down to the bench, and then uh, double, triple, quadruple measured, because I hate measuring, um, to make sure I've got them in the right place. So they're upright, they're vertical, they're square. So that should be my template to work with now. So now we're on to cutting out the steel. So a bit of um and iron. There's probably a way of working it out, but because I need to put the bend in, I need to allow for that in my measurements. So I want an 80 mil, I'm gonna do an 80 mil um, down, and then a right angle bend, plate across the bottom, and then another bend up with another 80 mil sitting on the top. The reason I've got, these are only 50 mil high, but the plate on the bottom will be 80 mil because with the Symagic wheel, the rim is bigger than the uh, the Logitech, so I need to be able to get it. Uh, the whole unit needs to sit lower in the rig, so that I keep the uh, the same driving position. Of course, it will be adjustable, but I also um, want a bit more extra adjustability there. So I've allowed myself 80, 80 mil to work with. Hopefully that works, and if not, we'll have to make another one. So I've got the first line marked in the steel, 80 mil long, and then. I figured out allowing for the bends, so that gap in the middle there, that gap in the middle there is 116 mil, the gap I'm gonna work with. That gives me a couple of mil leave, leeway either side. So the time I take out the thickness of the metal, I think I'm left with about 110 mil um, across that base plate. So it's accounting for the thickness of the metal and also going to lose a bit in the actual bend. Even though I'm going to score this with a grinder to bend it like I did with the other plate, um, we're still going to lose a, a little bit of width. So 110 mil in the middle and then another 80 on the other end. So it's all clamped in now. We'll get a cut out and then um, basically only got to cut one side. Luckily this plate was actually pretty square. Which is cool, that helped me out. So that's the joys of having a sheet metal guillotine. So you can cut and you get nice square edges. I haven't got one, I've just got an angle grinder with one mil cutting wheel. So, um, but anyway, this has helped me out. It's nice and square to start with. Otherwise, probably be another half an hour straightening it all up. So uh, let's get it cut and um, we'll put some scores in and see if we can put the bends in and, and then we'll do it again and do it right. <laughs> All right, that's looking pretty good. Obviously, we can tweak them in a bit. Probably not completely square yet, but before we go wasting too much time, let's go see if, well, million dollar question, will it fit? All right, she's in there. It's a bit tight, but um, for my measuring, I'll call that a win. Okay, so quick update. Got the grooves cut in now to bolt the sim magic in on the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'll use the brackets that uh, were supplied with the with the uh, M10. They're right angle brackets, so I'm going to use those to use the uh, the T fasteners in the side of the, the unit, and then we'll just bolt them in the back there. The unit can slide up and down with its own runners, so we just need these two runners for the four bolts in the front. Then we've got forwards and backwards. Um, adjustability. So now what we're getting on to is the up and down height. So what I've done, I've drilled the four holes. So I'm going to have two, two bolts, one front, one back, either side. I've drilled four holes there. I'm going to slot those out so that we get the up down movement or the up down adjustability. And then what I'm actually doing, these are the brackets that go on the side of the uh, sim rig. So what I'm going to do weld some captive bolts into these holes and that's basically what I'm doing now so 
to do that, or the easiest way I could think of to do that, I've actually bolted the hole, the bolt, I've, <laughs> I've bolted the bolts into the holes already in the plate. So on the bottom I've just nipped them up, nice and tight, a little washer on the back. And then all I do then, oh, all I do then, is drop the plate on the top, and you can see the back of the bolt heads there. So clamp the plate down now, and then we're just going to hose a load of weld in the back side, get a really good weld, loads of heat, loads of penetration, and we'll unbolt the, the unit. Pick this one up, that's still a bit warm. So actually, I've done one already over here. So we unbolt it and then on the uh, on the surface side I just go around and gently tack in the uh, the bolt so it's fully welded in. I can clean that up with a grinder uh, and just be really careful I don't get any spatter on the uh, on the threads, but we can always run a tap down it if we need to. But so yeah, that's where we are. It's coming along. Um, and that's pretty much it after that. Once we've got those done, then yeah, as we said, we should slot those holes out and then I'm gonna trim this up. So probably from here, come down and then it doesn't need to be quite as long as it is. So I'll probably lose about an inch off the back as well. But yeah, we just tidy it up. Um, just round off all the edges, but it's welded in. Welded the sides up and ground them down so they're reasonable it'll do the job and then you can see there that's where i'm going to cut to so i didn't weld fully it's no point wasting wire and gas let's cut a nice angle there and then we'll just have the flat edge and we'll work it down make it look as pretty as we can right let's crack on Okay, so I'm going to make up some spaces. I use these um, off cuts that I cut out with a hole saw. So I want to get them all nice and round and smooth edge. I'll figure it out this way. Pop them on. I'll show you the next bit. Use the, uh, the bench grinder, face mask on. Bunch of spaces. Saved a lot of time that did. Alright, so there's an update. So we chopped the back off, neaten that up, works pretty nice and tidy. Um, we've got managed to get the holes cut out there so they all fit in. Drilled them, made them a bit big, and then we've got a, a little bit of room there to get some angle on the uh, steering column if we want to. We've got plenty of height adjustment up and down. Obviously you've got the adjustment in backwards and forwards. All we need to do now really is uh, is get the uh, the motor in. I'll put the side brackets on and we'll just figure out where they've got to be drilled. And that's it, it's all done. So I made up those cheeky little washers there. And I'll go on the back one, small one on the front, because that's all I had. And yeah, they look pretty cool I think. That's going to be real nice. Guys, how are we doing? So we're going to have a bit of a shunt around in the, uh, in the sim room today, try and free a bit of space up for my wife. So I moved the rig around, shunted it into the corner. But as soon as I've got an opportunity, while well, I've got everything unplugged, to uh, fit up the Simagic M10. I've got all the brackets made up and painted now. All looking pretty good. And also, uh, while I'm at it, we're going to fit some pedals. So I've actually got some uh, V3 Fanatex. <laughs> As you can see, they don't quite look stock. We've had to make a bit of a modification to them to get them to fit the rig. They're a little bit wide. Um, and I didn't film that, I didn't bother. I wish I had now, because it was 
quite a bit of fabrication went on there. But anyway, they're in the box and they're ready to go on as well. So hopefully they fit. So yeah, let's get on with it. Let's talk in more action. Okay, so first job is to strip all the old Logitech stuff off the rig. So it's got four, four mil Allen key bolts there, four on the pedals. They're all of them. They're all unplugged already. So we just pull them out. And we start fitting the new stuff. Woohoo! So, for the uh, V freeze, we just need to plug this cable into that port there on the other side. And that's the USB out. Luckily, I uh, foresaw this being a problem. Luckily I foresaw this being a problem with a big black flat plate we've got on the bottom, so I cut a little uh, inspection hole out there so I can get in to plug and unplug things in. Hopefully, I made it big enough. Um, could always be, uh, could always done with being a bit bigger, but hopefully it's big enough for me to get it in. Story of my life. It's usually too small. Done. Satisfying. Okay, you're just going to have to overlook the um, fraction of the paint. It's pretty heavy and it's pretty tight to get it in there. Good thing about painting this with truck bed liner, it's pretty tough paint. <laughs> okay, so got all the brackets ready. So, first job is to uh, fit the side brackets on to the plate and then we'll. Get this Simagic unit out and actually fit that to the plate as well. I think it'll be easier to do it off the rig. And then we'll lift it all in as one. And hopefully it fits. It's been so long.
All right, guys, so I think what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to end this film and I'm going to get on here and, and start doing some driving with this gorgeous new wheel and uh, pedal setup. I'm really excited to finally have it fit into the sim. Anyway, thanks for watching the film. I hope you enjoyed seeing me do the fabrication to, to get this uh, plate made up to, to mount the wheel to. Obviously, you've seen the wheel again a bit more closely. Um, but yeah, I need a few more days now just to, to get on and get a feel for it and then I'll report back to you um, how it is. What my plan is, is to do an actual comparison between the uh, load cell pedals and obviously direct drive wheel to the old G29 cell that I used to run. Um, and I'm going to do a lap time comparison and a race distance comparison, trying just to figure out how much it's going to improve my performance over, over the course of a race and then also over the course of a flying lap. Um, I think that'll be the most interesting comparison. So I need a few days to get that done. Obviously, you've got to set this up, get it to how I like it, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll try and get some data down and we'll do a nice film for you to compare the two. Anyway, if you haven't done so already, please uh, click on the, uh, on the like button down below. But also, if you haven't done so, do subscribe. I'll put the link in just here now. Um, so subscribe to the channel. Obviously, you've seen a bit more of my rig today. Um, it started off with just a pile of steel down on the floor and it's turning into something that I'm quite happy with. Um, and I know a few of you like it as well, but it's far from done. Uh, we've still got a lot, lot to do. I've got a lot of plans to keep improving it, keep tinkering away with it. So please follow along and, uh, and enjoy the, uh, the ride and the experience that I've had in building this rig. Anyway, we'll leave you at that. Stay safe, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you soon. Cheers.